Greetings gamers. Today we're checking out this PVM 2030 professional video monitor, 20 inches. It's an old boy made from the early 90s, I believe. I got this at the hospital I was working at back in 2014. I picked up my PVM 20 M2 MDU first. Uh, I'd been looking for an RGB CRT and I was all obsessed with finding one and I was searching all the thrift stores and going on Craigslist and couldn't find any. And then I was talking to someone at work about it and he said, well, why don't you just go check in the, I worked at a hospital, they said, why don't you go check where we got all the spare parts? I think they got a couple laying around in there and they did. They had a PVM 20 M2 MDU in there and they had this. And at the time the guy said, well, just pick up this this 20 M2 MDU, it's newer and it's got less hours on it. So I picked it up and thought, I'll just leave, I got it for free basically. I think I bought them pizza. And I left this one in there and I thought, oh, why would I need two CRTs? <laughs> yeah, so months went by and I was loving that CRT and I was thinking, why am I letting that other one just sit in storage? So I went over there and asked and they said, yeah, you can have it. And they dollied it over to my ultrasound room and just parked it on the ground. And I took this beast home. This was my, uh, my favorite monitor for a long time. I like it. I still like it more than my 20 M2 MDU. So the 20 M2 MDU is rated at 600 lines at 20 inches. Um, and this monitor is rated at 540 lines, but it is sharper than the 20M2 MDU. It has better colors. It's got a better tube in it. It just does. And I've seen other PVM 2030s, and they as well have better tubes. And I've seen multiple 20M2 MDUs. Those just don't have as good of tubes in them as these 2030s. I don't care what they rate the TV lines at. I mean, I you know take all that tv line marketing with a grain of salt anyways guys so one cool thing about this monitor is these light up buttons on the side let's make the room dark and i'll show you the buttons on the side of it i, I love these buttons how they light up like that they got the lamps in them i would just leave it on but it actually is distracting while gaming because Whatever source you're on blinks. And the only way to get it to stop blinking is to hit this control button right here. And then it just stays solid, but all the other lines, all the other, excuse me, all the other lamps turn off. So I leave it off when I'm using it. Let's put the, uh, let's bring some more light into the room. Now this, this, monitor reminds me of a presentation monitor it looks presentable it's black just the design quality of it with the lamps on the sides compared to this in here this broadcast monitor this grays with the handles and the grill it just looks industrial this one hides all the vents like the vents are on the top here they actually don't look bad they went out of their way to make this look presentable. And it has a built-in amplifier. It does not have, well, it, it does. It came with speakers, but the speakers it came with are detachable. And they will actually, there's mounting brackets for them. And they mount to the side here. And it actually looks retarded in my opinion. So I don't, I never left it like that. I would, I just left these on the side. Or I think when I was using this, I actually, I just set them on just they I thought they looked better just sitting next to it and the magnets whatever they must be shielded the Sony's have great shielding anyways so the magnets in here don't ever affect the screen okay what to say about these speakers okay so these aren't the actual speakers that came with the monitor I got it it was an endoscopy monitor I mean that means it was used for butt scopes guys they were butt probing and throat probing dudes with this monitor on the regular. And this one was the one they used down in, sur like in surgery. This was their workhorse for years. This has a lot of hours on it. And it's fucking still like the colors on it just pop as good as anything. It looks brand new. These monitors are tanks. If you can get one 
I mean, even if it ain't in good working order, like you can fix, if you're willing to fix it, these are fucking beasts. I think these came out when Sony was at its, like, at the top of their game. And they just, I don't know, there's something about them. Like I said, they're rated at 540 lines, but they look better than like a, a 2001 PVM 20 M2 MDU. Manufactured 1991, guys. I'll bring you guys around back in a minute and we'll check that out. But this thing was made in 1991. My 20 M2 MDU was made in 2001. And there's typically a big difference between 2001 TVs and um, 19, 1991, man. I think that might be the same year as my BVM 1911 back here. Or pretty close to it. Yeah, about the speakers here. So, yeah, like I was saying, this was the endoscopy monitor. So they didn't need speakers with it. So they probably tossed them right away. Um, when I got it, it didn't have speakers, but I found, so, okay. So you can find these speakers for this monitor online. They look exactly like this, but I believe they say Sony here instead. And they're pretty damn expensive. And a lot of times the foam's blown out on them. Um, so I found these, which were made for a very similar Sony TV. Like these are Sony speakers. Let's just turn them around here. You know, yeah, these were made for the consumer grade monitor that came out around this time. That's very similar to this, this pro monitor. And I bought these online dirt cheap with busted speakers in them. And I just replaced the speakers. I didn't even bother refoaming them. And I mean, these are shitty. I mean, look, dude, I got tower speakers with a hi-fi. Like compared this to that, it's like comparing RF on a TurboGrafx-16 on an LCD to like playing on a 900 line BVM. Like this stereo system hi-fi is like a 900 line BVM and these speakers they're like rf man they're, they're bad like and you guys a lot of you guys are gaming with this talking about how nice your your speakers are on your tvs like there's just tiny little bullshit speakers in here there's no professional monitor or high-end consumer that really has decent speakers i think i'm going to do a video let me know if you guys are interested talking about audio file versus video file stuff and this is what got me into hi-fi stereos as my friend came over and he heard this and I was like oh look at these new speakers I got and he was just like appalled with me that I would show anybody these speakers and be proud of them and he got me into hi-fi gear which is pretty awesome you guys might be interested in that if you're into these old analog video stuff there's a whole world of hi-fi out there but yeah back to this monitor here you know I got composite plugged in right now and it looks okay i was gonna say that it looks like ass i remember thinking it looked like ass before but it, right now it really doesn't look too bad it has a dynamic range adjustment and it has a uh, a notch instead of a comb filter it has a notch filter so let's check that out here we are composite video with notch off. Let's turn it on. Okay, we just turned the notch on. And that does improve it in my opinion. I think with notch off, it's absolutely hideous. Let's do that again. Let's turn notch off. Yeah, it gets this weird screen dooring. Like you can really notice it up here in the in the sky. Like you can see, like it looks pixelated, like there's vertical lines. Let's turn the notch off. I'm sorry, we just turned the notch on. And then you can see you, your scan lines become more apparent and you don't see that screen dooring as much. I think I didn't know about the notch filter when I first started using this monitor. 
and I was always using it with the notch off and I just couldn't stand it. I thought it looked absolutely terrible. Which it, I think it does with no filter. Now there's a dynamic range switch as well. Let, let's turn that on and see what it does. I think it it'll like do it'll skew the white balance more blue. You might notice it in Sonic's eyeball. Okay, so the dyna it's called new dynamic color. It's off right now. I just turned it on. Man, I don't see any any change. I'm not really seeing anything. Okay, let's um let's hook up my well we got the composite plugged in with Sonic. Let's hook up composite to my XBR 200 consumer grade and see how that looks. Just for just for shits and giggles, guys. Okay, here we are hooked up to my XBR 200 36 inch consumer grade. And I think it obviously looks better in my opinion. Let's look up at the, the sky. If the scan lines are more pronounced, you don't have that weird screen dooring. Now I'm not making any adjustments with the consumer grade here. I never use composite video and I'm not 100% sure what adjustments you can even make in this XBR to enhance or limit the video capabilities of composite video on it. I would know that all of these have a comb filter built in and that's really I think what we're seeing here is the power of comb filter. If you're using composite video and you have a good comb filter in your CRT, it looks pretty good. In fact, with this BVM over here, you can't really see it, but yeah, my BVM 1911 with a comb filter, man, I mean, I might have just stopped there if that's what I got first. I might have never even got into RGB because it looks so good on that on that BVM. But part of that is the BVM is like a 900 line. It's just super sharp to begin with. So then when you soften it, a 900 line BVM with composite with a good comb filter is going to look pretty close to a consumer grade with RGB. Yeah, yeah. So what else can we do here? Okay, we're done fucking around, guys. We're using the RGB. Now, this uh, monitor will not take component, so we are using RGB today. Kind of a rarity for me, I know. Now, one thing to point out is you see how the computer and line A lines are blinking there? That's because I have the audio piped into the line A, and then the video, of course, is going through that weird plug. But you do need, there is no audio on the computer line, so you do have to send your audio through another line. And then you just select it. Like, if I want audio to go through line B, I'd hit B here. Or no, you hit computer first, and here you can't hear anything because you got the audio going through line B. So we'll hit A. Now we can hear it. And then we'll hit computer, and we got, we got it working here. So... Look at that guys, look how much better that looks compared to composite video. I mean, it's it's a gorgeous monitor, like I'm looking at it now, I'm kind of missing it. I'm like, man, I want to just leave this plugged in for a while and use this instead of my BBM. There's a certain look that these old 90s pro monitors and consumer monitors have. It's different than the 2000s. I think it might be because the early, the early 90s CRTs have a jungle chip for video processing, and there's a different chip or series of chips in the later 2000s CRTs. And there is a kind of softer, pleasing, more vibrant color image to these older ones that I really like. Here's the remote for the TV. This came with it. What is it? RM739. I mean, I don't even use it. I mean, it, very limited functionality. I mean, it'll get the job done. You can use picture, like as, like instead of adjusting brightness, you're actually better color calibrating a TV and never adjusting the brightness. And just using picture if you want a darker or more saturated image. But yeah, I never used that remote. With Sony's, 
You can use any Sony remote with any Sony device. You can use a Blu-ray remote from 2010 on this 1991. Like, um, let's see, will this adjust the volume? Let's see, check it out. This is, this is the remote for my XBR over here. See, it'll take the volume down on that. And check it out over here. Can you see it? See the volume click on and off? Yeah. It, it, any remote, any Sony remote will work with any Sony device. Okay, here we are around back guy. And here's another thing. All the buttons and dials are hidden on the back here. They're not in the front, like on this. See how all the buttons are in the front? And it's just clean on the front of this thing. That's another hint at the fact that it's a presentation style monitor. Um, you, pay no attention to these brackets. I used to have my tower speakers next to this and I just secured them to this beast of a CRT so they wouldn't fall on my daughter. Okay, so what do we got going on here? We got H center. I believe this centers the image and then V hold. You can use this. I've used this before with a PAL game. When you have PAL games hooked up, the image can roll. And if you adjust this V hold, you can lock it in. So this will help if you're going from PAL to NTSC. Now these two things affect composite video. This is a notch filter. It's what they were using before comb filters and it's not as good. Um, we'll mess with that in more detail. I was just telling you about that, but I wanted to show it to you on the back. So yeah, these two things affect, this thing barely does anything. It'll kind of make the image blue or white. Like it affects the white balance. And you got a manual degauss button here. And then you got a remote. I guess this will make it so you, your remote control like won't work if you don't want the remote to work. You got a badge here. Make the room a little darker so you can see the badge. Sony model number PVM 2030. 50, 60 hertz. It'll work with PAL stuff. 120 volt. It doesn't look like it's a multi volty so it's not going to work in Australia. Okay, coming down below. This looks cool. This embossed Sony logo. I love how this monitor looks in general. I love these old badges. Here's that 1991 guys, January, almost 1990. Fuck, this thing's old, that's badass. Okay, now here's, here's the thing guys. Here's the fucking, here's the thing. I remember when I was looking at this monitor and the guy was showing me, do you want the 20M2 MDU or do you want the 2030? I thought this thing looked cool, but it was older and I it said, RGB on it doesn't even say RGB. It just says computer. It says RGB up here But I'm looking like I looked on the back here when I was thinking about picking this up and nothing said RGB So I thought like I wasn't sure if this could take RGB and I honestly assumed that it couldn't and Then I saw a phone dork video. He does a review on this monitor and this is the crux of the biscuit. You have to, you just need an adapter. This is it. They call it computer. This is where the RGB comes in. But instead of using your typical SCART, you get this cable. Instead of, instead of using your typical SCART, like this, or um, being a lot of these use just uh, BNC RGB. It uses this weird thing. There's only a couple monitors that use this weird thing. But guys, wire is wire. Like, all you gotta do, like you can make these on your own. Like, you, I'm sure you can go online and you can still find whatever the name of this plug is and you just buy it for some old computer, cut it off, get yourself some wire. All you need is wire like this, guys. Just any old freaking wire. And you just wire it yourself. That's all somebody did here. They took a SCART plug on one end and this on the other. And you just read the pin out and follow directions like in third grade. Like, you know, the sink goes to this pin. And you just wire it in, solder it in, whatever you got to do. 
But I found somebody made one of these for me online back in the day. And it's well made. It's not cheap. I think they charge like 40 bucks, but I mean, I say that 40, it might be worth it if you can just buy one. Like 40 bucks is worth not having to mess around with all those wires. But yeah, so here's a cool thing. You can do sync on green. I think you need that for like PS1 or something. Some, some things want sync on green. This is like some remote stuff, I think. Okay, and here we go. You got, you know, your composite in and out and it's got built-in terminators. So if you were running, like right now we're running composite video from my Sega Genesis. You need to turn this on right here. In this terminator. If it's off, I think it'll be too bright. Why don't we just test it? Let's turn it off and see what happens. I'm all about fucking with this shit. I got no qualms about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's way too bright. Here, I'm gonna hold it right here and turn it back on. On. yeah it's darker so yeah you need to turn those you need to turn those on or off you know turn them on if you're actually using the input if you're not using the input this doesn't matter because we're not using line a i think i just always leave them on and then it will take s video and you can switch it over to this vtr that old computers and like um camcorders used now, I always thought that I was going to come out on this video and say that composite looks like ass on this monitor, but I'm not ready to say that yes, yet. I remember S-Video actually looks pretty good. It's impressive they had S-Video all the way back in 1991. But because this doesn't have a comb filter, that consumer grade with like late generation Sony looks better with composite with its... Uh, with its comb filter than this thing does with its notch filter. We'll do some comparison here in a minute. And here's the amp. It's got, it looks like it can do eight or 16 speakers, ohms. I forget the wattage on it, but it's, you know, it's, it'll work. It'll get the job done, but it, it ain't no hi-fi, that's for sure. So yeah, let's uh, mess around with those, those uh, notches and whatnot, the, the, the notch filter and see how it looks. Okay, we gotta talk about how inconvenient this monitor is. It's a pain in the ass to service or to make any adjustments. The screws are in here. Um, so there's some here, here. There's two more on the other side. Like pulling this shell out. Like one cool thing is it doesn't have handles. It has kind of this part of the chassis is it incorporates these handles into the design which looks really cool it has the cube design it flips tate you can actually stack and place things on top of this but it also makes it a pain in the ass to like pull open and service and i've had to do a lot of service to this twice the yoke was rotated and on another pvm 2030 i had the yoke was rotated and you have to manually go in there and twist the yoke and reseat it. And it's really hard to do. Like when you reseat the yoke on this, you have to have the TV on and you're looking at it and you got your hand in there and I got shocked doing it. I ended up getting a piece of wood and like setting it on the yoke and then just tapping it with the hammer so that I didn't have to have my hand in there. And it kind of went dunk, dunk and knocked the yoke down and just twisted it a little bit. And that worked really good. But my point is it's a pain to make that adjustment opening it up is a pain if you want to adjust the screen like the horizontal position like this you can you turn a pot in here on the side but then you got to open it up so like cycling in between systems the image isn't centered right and if you wanted to center it again you'd have to open it up and do that i was going to cut a hole on here and i if i use this monitor as my main monitor i would cut this and put little hinges here and have an access door and you could just go in and hit those pots right here because the board to adjust them is right here i believe either that or it's on the other side and you could just if there was a hole here or a door you you, you know it'd be easy to access but all of those adjustments are made with pots there is no on-screen display no osd menu for that stuff 
I mean, another inconvenience is that plug back there. So it's just something to be aware of if you're getting into this old, you know, cantankerous, funky old beast. Final thoughts on the 2030 here. Um, I love it. It's got a certain something about it. You know, it looks different than other pro monitors. It's more like a presentation. It's something you can set out in your living room and your wife won't lose her fucking mind over. You know, I'm a sucker for old analog tech like lamps and things like that. Um, it is inconvenient, you know, like I, I mean, I like to open these up for you, but this thing's such a pain in the ass to open up guys. Just go to like, um, retro tech's got a couple videos on these. I'm sure if you, you know, YouTube searched retro tech 2030, he'll, he'll open it up for you. He's all about them caps. Uh, yeah, the color on it, man, the picture on it, it's sharper than your average 600 line pro monitor, even though it's rated at 540. Uh, and it's a tank, you know, it's a workhorse. Oh, I was saying you can stack stuff on it. Like it's, these are made to stack the cube design. You would roll up into like a old broadcasting station or a news station and they would have them stacked on top of each other. However, I used to have a VCR, not a VCR, a DVD player or something on top of this one, or a stereo, I think it was a stereo, and I felt it getting hot up there. You know, even though there is that space, the, the vents are up there, and it does vent better if you take something off of it, and, you know, heat is bad for these things, so I wouldn't recommend setting stuff over the vents on the top. The speakers are up here, they're not on the vents, they're fine, but... Not in the back portion where the, the heat dissipates. But yeah, man, I mean, go out there and get you some CRTs, boys.